Welcome to Feedback Strategies for your online course. We can go ahead and get started with our workshop. And I think we'll just go ahead and start with uh, kind of the agenda and our goals for today. A lot of topics, but some of these aren't as long as you would think. So I, I think we can get through all of these. I'm going to start us off with some introductions and an icebreaker activity. And then we're just going to briefly identify three different types of feedback. I don't think there will be any earthquakes there for you, but it's always a nice quick review. And then we can look at the ways that we can form plans for communication, how you can build this into your lesson planning. We'll discuss very specific strategies that you can incorporate into your pedagogy. We'll take a look at some best practices for feedback communication with your online students. And then, of course, we're going to explore some tools that are available to you um, as NIU instructors. There is a formal Q&A period at the end, but there's not too many of us. So if you have any questions, feel free to chime in at any time. So if you would like, you can either turn on your microphone if you prefer, or you can just type in the text chat, but um, introduce yourself, let us know who you are, and then um, describe the most memorable piece of feedback you received as a student and why that stands out to you. I firmly believe that as educators, we value our education. There's a reason why we continue to work in the field. So um, I have no doubt that you had some specific memories of feedback that you've received. Welcome, David. So great timing. We're just going to do some icebreakers. You can feel free to type your answer in the text chat or you can turn on your microphone. Great. Grace is commuting, not a problem. So uh, we'll just look at some of the other responses. Great. I'm just looking at Matt's response here. So he's with the reference and instructional librarian in the College of Law. And some of the feedback looks like silence is not a bad thing. Don't try to fill every moment when you speak and allow time for information to breathe. Excellent. Sounds like maybe that was something from a, an oral presentation. David Nieto is an assistant professor, and the most memorable pieces of feedback he's received um, led me to clearly see where I could have improved my work and also alluded to what I did well. Excellent. Tao Lee is from chemistry and biochemistry. And then you teach general chemistry and a graduate course. Wow. Now, if you're still typing, um, you can go ahead and fill in that last question. Um, but I think and Tess says that they like for me to bring the scientists other than NIU to give a lecture. Oh, that's some interesting feedback. I like that. So it sounds like you all have received some very positive feedback. So I'm glad that's what comes to mind. So I think we can go ahead and we can just briefly touch on the um, three different types of feedback. And then we can start looking at specific strategies and things that you can do in your own courses. 
Again, I don't think any of this is brand new to you, but I, I do always like to start here as a refresher. There are three different forms of feedback that we look at with our students and particularly with our online students. We want to make sure that we touch on all three components. Uh, there is the instructor aspect, and this is the feedback that students can expect to receive from you as their teacher. There's also the feedback that your students supply. So a lot of times we might think about this as maybe the end of the course evaluations, uh, but certainly there are other opportunities for feedback throughout the duration of the course. So um, you can solicit feedback from your students and we'll talk about ways to do that. And then there is, of course, the peer feedback. So this is some of the feedback that your students will receive from others in the class. And I always like to bring this up right at the beginning because I think a lot of times as instructors, when we think of feedback, we think of how many replies we have to give to our students. And if we think about feedback is what we have to do and what we have to contribute, uh, you might run the risk of burnout. So uh, think about all the different ways that your students can engage um, and, and solicit this type of feedback from other outlets besides just you. Um, they will benefit from it. So hopefully on that note, um, an uplifting note that it, everything is not on your shoulders, we can look at some different strategies here. Ideally, we do want to plan for communication and plan for feedback. And so some of this starts out with uh, just taking a look at how people perceive feedback and communication. So I do love this little, um, little comic strip that we have up here. So from the grad student perspective, if their instructor or their, their teacher tells them, you need to get this done as soon as possible. The translation, of course, is that they should have had it done yesterday, maybe last week. Versus if you turn something in to your instructor and you said, oh, I'd really like some feedback from you as soon as possible, it means we'll get to it eventually. Um, hopefully, that's just a little bit of humor for you. I, I hope our timelines aren't that far off, uh, but we'll take a look at this. I know everybody always says to review your syllabus, um, but I, I thought I would put in here a couple of ideas for you that you may not have included in the past, and this is particularly beneficial for your online students. Um, so this is an actual blurb of something you might see as a, as a statement in a syllabus for an online course. You might ask your students to allow a certain amount of time for you to reply. So in this example, it says, please allow 24 hours for me to respond to your email. I cannot guarantee to reply on weekends. And send me your most pressing concerns by Friday. I typically do not respond to emails after 5 o'clock PM. Uh, that gives a lot of information for your students, and it can hopefully prevent some of those panicked emails about why aren't you responding. Um, another statement that I do like to include here with our students is just a brief statement saying, hey, I understand your schedule is different. Um, you're welcome to email me at any time, but just be aware that I'm going to respond during the above mentioned hours. So I do find this particularly helpful. I know as a grad student, I worked an evening shift and I started submitting homework late, um, I think at like 2 or 3 a.m., but that's just what worked with my shift. And I actually remember an instructor quizzing me as to why I would submit homework during such strange hours. Um, and, and for me, that was kind of a, a strange moment to, to realize that they were analyzing not only what I submitted, but when. Um, so you may just want to include a statement like this. You also will probably want to discuss your timeline. So what's your typical grading turnaround time? So um, again, here's an example blurb, you know, all assignments um, unless noted otherwise are due on Sunday by 11.59 p.m. and grades will be updated or posted within three business days. So it, it's kind of a contract between you and your students. It also helps you stay on target. And again, you, you gave yourself some leeway, unless noted otherwise. If something comes up, I'm sure you could make accommodations.
We're going to talk about some specific strategies here in just a moment, but um, another idea here is to solicit some feedback from your students. And it's nice to plan for this throughout the semester, um, at least once or twice so that you can gauge their reaction, see if there are things that they're confused about, that they're not understanding, not catching. It's a great way to catch things before it becomes an ongoing problem. So uh, we'll look at some different strategies for that. And of course, you can build in peer review activities. So um, I thought this would be a, a great option just to to hear from some of you. Um, and again, this is just an estimate, but on average, how often do you ask students to critique their peers' work? Um, and do you see any advantages or disadvantages to this? I, I hear a lot of mixed feedback from faculty on this, so I'm just curious. Feel free to go ahead and type in the chat or turn on your mic. Yeah. Matt says never. Any particular reasons? And Tao also says I did not ask. Okay, great. Thank you for being brave to volunteer. Sometimes it, some instructors just never thought about it. Sometimes they they have valid reasons for thinking this might not be a great option. Uh, Matt said that in the second semester it might be a good idea, but in the first one they're so overwhelmed um, that they may wonder what criteria they need to evaluate others and they'll overthink it. David likes to typically include two activities that require peer review advantages that build solidarity, disadvantages is typically very shallow and not critical. Mm. Okay. All right, I, I like this idea that it's something that you can build up to. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you know, my background is in English, so I, I've seen I've seen it go well and I've seen it um, leave a lot of room for improvement. David said, one disadvantage from Blackboard is that they will not see their peers' feedback until I post a grade. Can I do this differently? Um, so I have some information on that actually coming up. So hang on to that question, David. It's on its way. All right. So that might have been a little bit fast, but we're going to switch straight into specific strategies, uh, things that you can actually do. Uh, one of my favorite ways to start the feedback process with students is to call for self-reflection. And I know a lot of times we think about feedback as written comments, but there is an opportunity here to communicate with your students. This works particularly well in the draft stage of a project. And if possible, and I know that there may be time constraints, there may be uh, course size constraints. So again, I use this loosely, but if possible, you may want to explore the option of meeting with your students one on one. And if you can do that, a great way to start the self reflection is to ask them open ended questions. I remember there was one faculty member who would invite his students to his office hours um, and they had to bring their rough draft and you'd always start with what do you want to tell me? about your assignment. Uh, everything was an open-ended question. And it revealed a lot of very interesting things. Some students immediately skipped into things that they had questions on. Sometimes people um, were struggling in certain areas, and that's what they wanted to talk about. Other students were quick to tell them about their thought process and how they started the, the project and where they ended up. So. Uh, Asking these open-ended questions, it'll reveal a lot about students' individuality. 
It's also an opportunity where you can ask students to analyze the rubric or the assignment prompt and ask them how do they think they met each of those specific sections. And as a third option, which sometimes can make students uh, very nervous, but it, it can actually be a wonderful exercise, is to ask them to self-grade their project. How did they think they did and why? You may need to reiterate to them that this is not an option where we're going to negotiate your grade, um, but you want to see if they can synthesize um, their work with an actual score. Um, do they understand why they would receive a specific grade? Um, and again, you can ask additional questions. You know, if you know that they've scored themselves very high or very low, you can start to ask additional questions. You know, do you think that there's an opportunity to expand more here? Or do you think that this paragraph meets this specific section of the grading rubric? So uh, there's a lot of options here that you can ask your students um, to weigh in on, on kind of the feedback process. Another idea here that we have is to incorporate what I call exit slips, and I use the term exit loosely. But this is one way to keep checking in with your students. So um, if you have a synchronous course session with them or even, you know, at periodic milestone moments of your course, even if you're not meeting synchronously, you can ask students to um, give you some feedback. So these are a couple of different examples here. Um, them. What did you learn? What was confusing? I didn't know. Fill in the blank. I still don't quite understand. Um, or an, again, another open-ended question, what else do you want me to know? And again, I really like these questions for the simple fact that some students are more introverted than others, and they may be unwilling to voice some of these thoughts aloud. Uh, but they but they do want to communicate with you. And so this is another opportunity for you to get some input from your students. If uh, you see the three or four people are all confused about the same section, it's a really good opportunity for you to know that you may need to re-review certain items with your students. And again, it, if you don't want to do the, the end of a course, you can always do it um, at the beginning. So. Um, Oftentimes I will see with online faculty, they may assign readings or you know, lecture material and students are supposed to review that prior to coming to class. And this is an opportunity to, to make sure that they actually covered the material that they're going to need to access for that course's you know, activities for the day. And the other option here is to utilize peer review. So I think David was asking about this. So this is an option that you can use with Blackboard Ultra. And the peer review um, has some different benefits. For instance, it is anonymous from the student perspective. You as the faculty member will be able to see who wrote what in the grade book. Um, so you, know, you, can, you can monitor your students if they're getting off track, you can reach out to them, you'll know who typed what. Um, but it, it has some different features here. So for instance, it lets you choose the due date for the initial submission. So maybe the, the rough draft is due, what did I say on this one, um, September 27th. And then the next due date is when people have to do their, um, their peer reviews by. So we selected that one looks like um, October 3rd. And you also get to stipulate how many reviews per student. So you could say two, three, four, it gives you almost an unlimited number of options here. And one other thing to note about this is that um, if somebody did not turn in their, their initial submission, so that one that was due on 927, they are not eligible to review somebody else's work. So uh, that's another, another benefit to utilizing the peer review in Blackboard Ultra. And it typically does grade them 
based on however many points you set up and students should be able to um, see their feedback as soon as the, the peer review due date expires. So in this case, it would be October 3rd. By 11.20 a.m., the, um, the scores and the feedback would post right away. David, did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. All right, we're moving right along. So we can jump into um, some of the things that are considered our best practices with student feedback. So we have our lovely, we call it the feedback sandwich. Um, so I'm gonna let you just kind of look at this for just a moment here. All right, the idea here with our feedback sandwich, so to speak, is that we're going to have three different components and that's what's going to create our lovely sandwich. Uh, the first part is we're going to want to talk about specific evidence. Uh, talk about very specific instances so that your students understand what you're grading them on. Uh, point to specific passages, um, you know, quotes, um, facts, statistics, um, specific sentences, something like that. Um, they're going to want to have feedback you know, directly related to their writing. They're, they're not going to want to have to wonder where, where in their project you, you notice something. We do want to keep it balanced. So again, this comes back to the idea of positive reinforcement. So we're going to think about, yes, things that they could improve on, things that they could revise, but also let's think about what they did well and make sure to call attention to that. And so my example to this is, if somebody told me today that I needed to ride a motorcycle, I would probably be very nervous. Uh, but somebody would usually start you off with something familiar and they'd say, well, think about your balance. Think about how you shift your body weight, even when you're just on a regular bicycle, right? So we're going to build off of the familiar. So make sure to highlight those things that they're already doing well, and then students can keep improving. And we also want to keep it measurable. How do we know if they've hit the benchmark, right? If they've met our expectations, uh, give them specific criteria, something that they can actually analyze and look at and understand. And if we combine all three of those elements, hopefully it will result in a wonderful feedback sandwich. So, I think we have an example of this coming up in just a moment here. Um, something else that I did want to draw your attention to is the regular and substantive interaction policy. So this is actually a federal policy, but uh, it is also best practices for teaching online. And so there are the three characteristics of regular and substantive interaction. It has to be initiated by the instructor, frequent and consistent. I get a lot of questions about this. Um, sometimes instructors worry that they have to do a certain amount of replies or if they have a discussion board, they need to respond to each of their students. And that is by no means uh, the case whatsoever. So frequent and consistent, there are different ways to measure that. You know, you want to make sure that you've established a teacher presence. If you notice somebody doing an outstanding job, of course, you might want to acknowledge that. Or if you see students getting off topic, you may want to intervene and kind of get them back on track. Um, but there is not a quantitative amount uh, being tallied here. And of course, we also want to make sure that our interactions with our students are directly focused on the course subject. So this website that you see in the gray bar down at the bottom of the slide, I will send this to you in a follow up email. So if you're scrambling to, to get that link, don't worry, I will send you a list of resources and that will be in there but it gives you some very specific examples of um, what this regular and substantive interaction could look like. So it's really a great um, feature and just tool to keep kind of on hand. And 
And of course we have minimal marking. And this one is actually one of my favorites. And if I could leave you with one piece of advice for how to grade when we think about incorporating text or written feedback for our students, it would be to only focus your commentary on areas where your students have an opportunity to either improve or revise. If you're commenting on something that will never appear again in your course, it, it actually will appear almost as a deterrent for your students. It's a missed opportunity where they'll never be able to redeem themselves. So always think about incorporating feedback on something that they can continue to practice um, improving upon. So the idea of minimal marking is that as instructors, we're going to, to keep our, our comments to a minimum, but we want them to be effective. So there are many advantages to doing this. You are going to avoid auto-correcting your students. I know as an English instructor, this, this is something that's very tempting, mm -hmm. right? If your students keep making mistakes, if they keep incorporating run-on sentences, it can be very tempting to, to go in there and fix all of them. Um, but that's not helping the students learn to do it for themselves. So instead, you might show them one instance of where they need to fix their punctuation and then you could ask them in the commentary to identify three other areas um, that need to be revised that's that's an idea of minimal marking it is a time saver for you as the grader uh, this means that you won't be spending hours grading so you're keeping it minimal but effective um, and then you get to move on to the next student's work it has this positive focus on, on future improvements. You've let them know, like, hey, you're doing some good things. There's some other areas that might be a little weak, but don't worry, you're gonna have another chance to, to practice. And it also invites students to get involved in this revision process. So uh, I know that a lot of instructors will actually watch students um, if they're in a face-to-face -face class, if you, they you know, hand back a graded item students will always flip to the very last page and they'll go and check their their grade they might go back and review the um, the notes and the comments and everything but they're they're deeply invested in their grade so um, this is a way to invite them to to think about their grade as something that they are in control of and that they can they can continue to to improve Another idea here is how to strategize your feedback to your students. We have a lot of tools on hand. You can use announcements, you can use emails, right? You can have open office hours. Um, you can just send one-on-one -on -one messages to individual students or groups. And it actually can, can get overwhelming for the students if you have too many emails or too many messages coming out. So um, you're really going to want to think about how and when you send these, uh, the frequency. I have some students um, who have said that their instructor sends three, three emails a week. That might be a little bit much, um, considering that they may be in other courses too. There, there's a good chance that they might miss some of these messages. So you might want to think about paring them down. Um, think about the urgency. When are you sending them? So if you think back to our, our first example, when we were talking about the syllabus statements, um, if you quit checking your emails at five o'clock on Friday, um, you might want to send an email to students um, either Thursday evening or maybe even Friday morning at the latest, uh, reminding them about what to do for the week. At least give them a few hours if they have questions to, to get in touch with you. And also there is um, your timing. So just think about when these are going to show up in their inbox um, and how this relates to your course. For instance, um, you know, if you have a big project due, um, a large portion of their grade, you may want to be sending out milestone reminders to your students. So you know, you could send something, if they have two weeks to work on a project at the one week mark, you might want to send out a reminder that students should be 50% of the way through with their project, something along those lines, um, but kind of help pace them.
All right, so um, I do have just this one for you. You're welcome to um, take a look at this. You can, again, type in the chat or turn on your microphone. But if you go back to our feedback sandwich of evidence, balance, and measurable feedback, um, what do you think of these comments? These are the teacher comments from Dr. Miller. I realize that's kind of a lengthy question. So some of you may be typing in the chat. Um, another option is you can also include, if you were the student, you know, how would you feel about these, these types of comments? You can even just throw me an emoji if you want. And what would your reaction be? Thanks, Matt. So he just wants more, more detail, which is ironically, as he said, what the instructor asked for. Please provide more detail. Um, detail about what exactly? Um, you know, what do you think the goals were? Um, right. There's, there's not much to go on. Um, it is fairly pleasant. It's open ended. So I mean, it's not the best feedback in the world. It's perhaps not the worst feedback in the world. Um, so there is room for improvement here, right? I don't see anything telling the, the student what they did well and, and what they want to see more of. Um, is it measurable? Please provide more detail. Um, yes, maybe it's vague, right? Um, maybe if they asked for, you know, can you give me some evidence from this article? Etc. or can you refer to your in-class readings to defend your, your statement, something, um, anything there would be helpful. Um, and is it measurable? What do you think the goals were? Um, hard to know, right? Maybe it would be better to ask, what do you think the goals were? And, you know, how did you arrive at this answer? Ask for, again, some more some more specific information from your students so they can make a, a better revision. I imagine if a student tried to revise this, they would add some things, but it still might be vague. Okay, so we are, I think, at the final section. So we did move pretty quickly through this, but um, I do have some specific tools that are available for you to use in Blackboard. And we are moving to Blackboard Ultra. I think 
most of you have heard. So we've got about another year left with original, um, but these screenshots are for Ultra so that you can see some of the um, features that are available. So the first part is Blackboard Annotate um, allows you to customize feedback. And there's actually this option, you can even see it in the screenshot here, the content library, um, where you can actually save some of your, your feedback. So I think, it's, I think it's called a stamp, if I'm not mistaken. But you can save your most frequent comments. And this is actually a, a great way to provide consistency for your students. So for example, again, I always go back to English just because that's my background. If I had an assignment where I was really, you know, checking up on their APA um, citations, you know, I, I might often have the same comment, you know, like you forgot the volume or the issue number or, you know, make sure that you check your punctuation, something like that. So I can save my most frequent feedback. And um, as I go through the student submissions, I can just keep inserting that same that same feedback. If I'm, if I'm going to be grading the same area over and over and over again, um, some of the, the generic um, commentary for my students can be saved into this kind of content library. So that's pretty exciting. And there's still room for customizable feedback as well. So you can offer individual comments to your, to your students as well. You can also use grading rubrics. Um, and I did note over here, the one drawback with Ultra is that currently it does not work with assessments containing questions. So if you have a multiple choice or a true false question, it will not allow you to attach a grading rubric. But if you ask students to turn in some sort of a short answer or text response, um, then you can attach a rubric. And the nice part is, it, it kind of auto grades for you a bit. Um, and by that, I mean, if you see the red arrows there, um, when you when you click on the little drop down arrow, uh, that little panel expands. And I can decide if somebody has exceeded my expectations, met the expectations, or does not meet my expectations. And each time I select a numerical value, the uh, overall score for the student, that green grade pill at the top there, updates automatically. So um, you know you don't have to calculate how many points they got out of the out of the 90 possible points. It'll do it for me. So again, it's really nice. It does um, kind of keep that calculation for you. And of course, there's all these options to type in your written feedback to your students. There's also an option for audio and video feedback, which I think is a, a really great option to, to do something different for your students. So I was even testing it out this morning. Um, you know, you have the option, you can turn on your video, so maybe you just want them to hear your voice. Um, but this is a great way for you just to tell your students how, how they did on an assignment, um, things that you observed. Yeah. And as soon as your students go to click on their grade, they'll see a little bubble that there is um, feedback from the instructor. And when they click on it, it just shows up kind of like a, like a YouTube player. So that may be another grading time saver for you as well. There's also the option, which I love in Blackboard Ultra, um, to grade as groups as well as individuals. So you can give everybody in the group the same grade, or if you notice that some of the students are performing at different levels, you can adjust the grade um, on an individual basis. And um, right here, you can see the feedback. So you can give feedback for the entire group so everybody can see that. And then if you just want to kind of dial into a specific student um, and address them on a private individual basis, you can do that as well. And here's um, an example of how you can adjust the individual scores, as I mentioned. So um, as you can see in my example here, Sean Connery and Winston Churchill, they were kind of slacking off. But uh, the Megan Holt preview user, she was um, really carrying the group. So she got more points than the other uh, group members here. Sorry. 
And our last one here is the automated feedback. So this works really well for any type of um, assessment where you're using true false, uh, matching, uh, multiple choice questions, anything that can be auto graded by Blackboard, um, you can release automated feedback. So, um, you know, I think I did something generic here, like correct answers would see nice job versus incorrect answers would see good try, but, you know, think of X, Y, Z. And from the Blackboard Ultra um, instructor settings, you can decide when you want to release this feedback to your students. And so there are different options available here for you. You could release this immediately as soon as they submit their assignment or their exam, or you could release it after everything has been graded. And so, you know, there might be a delay for a little bit until um, so some other students finish turning in their, their work. But lots of different options here so that they can still receive feedback um, and this will help them review for later engagements. So I know we're about 15 minutes early, so I might be able to give you back some of your day or if you have any questions, I'm happy to is there anything that I can for you? I'll turn off the recording.